It's been a rough ride lately for the world's best cowboys and the world's toughest bulls. Oh! It went from bad to worse. Our world number one now having to be carried. The world's number one ranked cowboy is sidelined with injury, along with many others, leaving the door wide open for cowboys chasing down this year's gold buckle. Kaiki can do no wrong at the moment. This week, opportunity awaits the chasers as the PBR rides into Sioux Falls, South Dakota for another 15-15 bucking battle of the season. Fritzling trying to be the first man to make it to eight. And just like you guys were talking about, Dennis the Menace continues his tear through the best in the world. And he just brought the power, it seemed like, on this one. Yeah, he, he really did. Look, Fritzlin, I thought, did a great job out of there trying to get up over this bull's front end. But when we got to watch this back right here, good job here, but you watch Dennis as he turns back. You see how his back end gets lower? That, I mean, that really is wanting to rip Fritzlin's upper body back. That's what gives that bull such an advantage. Big scores, too, for him. Yeah, 45 and a half, top bull score of the weekend so far. You know, we were just commenting on his athleticism, but I think one of the other reasons why, you know, and Webb touched on it, Mac, is that he never has the same trip twice. That's intelligence, not just athleticism as well. As we Don't count Eduardo out of this one. Well, it's good you said don't count him out. You thought he might go a different direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but when he goes to the right, slam dunk. There's an explanation for why he goes to the right, too. First off, let's just start with great job by Eduardo riding the bull no matter what. But you see, he hung his horn just a little bit in the gate right there. That pulled him, started him back to his right lead, causes him to go to the right. Eduardo takes advantage of that. Well, we just watched Dennis the Menace use all his skill set to his advantage. Credit Eduardo for doing the same thing. Once that bull turned his preferred direction, he was not gonna let the opportunity slip. So we've got a rider on the board. 87 and a half from a Parasito is now the standard. But I just gotta touch on the fact that Webb's a triple threat, okay? <laughs> He's fighting bulls. He's pulling bull ropes, and he's doing the TV broadcast. You don't see that every day. No, it's you... Saturday night, man. Lost his rope. And you guys did such a good job of setting up the possibility. Tate Pullmeyer, Mac, as you just mentioned, were it not for losing that rope, that was gonna be a slam dunk. Just puts a little too much pressure on his hand right around the corner. It rolled it to his fingertips four seconds before he hits the ground right there. Um, just a little bit behind around the corner, pulled on him a little too much, popped his rope out of his hand. You gotta go all the way back to August in the PBR teams competition, Dalen Swearingen. Denner is not up to the task as credit grand theft for sending him flying. And that one is over before halftime. Hey, he did send him flying too. Yeah. He about went out of the shot there. But it's what I was saying, it's the forward movement. You see it here, boom, Denner's back. He handles it pretty good and then he's back again and then it launches him out across there. Grand theft ups his record to 40 and five. And that gives the bullfighters plenty of room to work when it throws the guy that far out. And after landing on his pockets, Barbosa exits stage left, or stage right, technically, against a bull that always seems to find a way. And again, this bull's MO is he just does enough on most occasions well, and it's like we talked about, you never know what to expect. 
other than a lot of athleticism out of this boy. You don't know which way. Like today, he turns out of here, kicks over his head. I mean, that's as good as you want to see one be. And as a rider, you're like, yes, give me that one every time. Let me try my hand at him. 45 and a quarter, he earned every point. Dos Santos ready to deliver. Just the way Justin drew it up. Dos Santos comes through in a big way. You have to figure oh, yeah. we're seeing a lead change. No offense to Eduardo, but that had everything the judges love. 90 and three quarters. And that was just the difference in bull power. When you think about how these guys get these scores, half of it is from that bull. That was the difference right there. Both guys made really good controlled rides, but the bull power is what decided it. An ROB of two plus, and that's what you expect on a qualified ride from riders who make it into these bucking battles. They are the best in the business. Dos Santos showing why right there. That is his first qualified ride. Well, excuse me, first qualified ride in this format in a few seasons. Not only a possible world number one ranking, but possibly an eighth career win. Centerfold had other ideas as he lays claim to the best in that pairing. As he makes Pacheco taste some dirt early, and that means Rafael Dos Santos will win a bucking battle for the first time ever. Well, congratulations to Dos Santos. He made just a fantastic ride. I mean, Dos Santos gets all the spoils as we bring you up to speed on the world standings. From Eduardo Parasito, yeah, this... Cooper Tires Cowboy. Let's go! Help him! Help him! We got it. First qualified ride of the weekend. And imagine that. The 15th ranked bull rider in the world, the Cooper Tires area boot bull rider. Absolutely outstanding on hard candy. 87 and a half points, 87 and a half. And the Royal River Casino and Hotel replay. I could have just petted him. You could have. What would you do if one of these bulls jumped up there? What would you do? I would jump down. Okay. Right Hello. Okay. Ah. Oh my. You. <laughs> I peed a little. I peed a little bit. Look, right. look, 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 look. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Now that's all it took. Something going. Keep going, Lucas. Look at that's all it took. That's it. It's for you guys to come and just be decoys or that's dummies or whatever you're doing. He gets to zero. He's DQ. He says, let's go. There you go. There you go. Now he's going to come off. Yeah, great job oh. by our U.S. Border Patrol bullfighters. Wow, what a performance by those three men. Folks, that is why these guys are here right here. They're the very best in the business. And you first saw Cody Webster right there take the lead right there with that bull. Look at that. Look at that. The left hand, he just keeps pushing El Samar away. That's outstanding. How about it for the U.S. Border Patrol bullfighters? Hey, I got to ask Cody a serious question. Right. Hey, Cody. Cody, were you pushing him? Because it looked a little like you were holding him back to make it a little more spectacular. He was going the wrong way. Okay, I got you. <laughs> it's a little showmanship. <laughs> like, here, like, here, I'll save you. I'll save you. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. 
Hey, yeah, great job right there, Cody Webster, saving the day. And a person that saves the day for us all the time, Kate Harrison. What's the latest on this one? Well, uh, he got his name. His, the, the owner bought it as, a, as an anniversary gift for his wife. Trying to make something happen here, Chase Doherty. Let me know. Yes, oh, no. Hang on, Chase. And a lot going on there, the 24-year-old Chase Doherty. Now, Chase Doherty taking a couple of shots, and, and you're looking at that clock, it says eight seconds, but there is a review to see if he slapped that bull before the eight seconds. While we wait on that word, Kate, tell me where the name came from quickly. What Laramie was telling us is that the stock contractors that own him, was bought as an anniversary gift for his wife. So maybe she calls him sweetness, but based on what we just saw in the dirt with Chase Doherty, I'm not sure that he's living up to his name much, guys. Nothing says I love you like a 1,600-pound animal athlete named Sweetness. 7.97 no. seconds is the walk-off time. No. Review is dumb. <laughs> You think so? Did you see me helping on that one, though? I, I saw you. I was paralleling the play. Defensive slides. Boy, here's another all-star bull right here, yep. That's a problem, and he is, he is feeling it. And our Sanford Health Sports Medicine team members, thank goodness we're We've got them here with us tonight. And look at that. Punishing. And as I mentioned, another all-star bull. And that is going to be the story throughout this weekend. It is going to be a gauntlet, RW. Oklahoma. And Rooster Cogburn. Oh, the one-eyed wonder. Here we go. Come on, Zane. Yeah, took an Oki, South Dakota. What do you think about that ride? Oh, man. You see him reset those feet. I'm with you. Trying to get through that eight seconds and a job well done on that Royal River replay. No doubt about it 81 points 81 the numbers right there that was for you lt and then we're also gonna be talking battered and bruised guys who happens to be a bruiser son and you told me hey he's one of the nice ones a lot like his daddy yes ma'am you can go up to him at the house and scratch his head and he loves horse cookies my mom taught him to eat horse cookies so he loves horse cookies and well He's going to get some treats today, and so is Dawson Britt. And how about the pair? The bull going to get rewarded, battered and bruised. Dawson Brant going to get rewarded with a tack qualified ride. Royal River replay. Let's move him to second in the round with 85 and three quarter points. Let's check back in with Kate Harrison. Kate. So Tanner Ronaldo is stock contractor. What do you make of his out? Any extra cookies or you want a few more points there? Uh, maybe a few more points, but he did good. I'm proud of him. He's a good boy. And the Cooper Tires bucket shoot. Come on, Dos Santos, keep going. Getting things heated up here in round number one. The 27-year-old 
Rolling in the Royal River Casino replay, awaiting the numbers to come in. How about 87 points? 87. Toss Santos striking. And that'll put him second right now in the round. Here tonight of the PBR first Premier Bank, Premier Bank card invitational. Not just one Santos. No. Nope. Dos Santos. Dos Santos. So here is his re-ride. Can he recover? Well, down. Punishment coming. Punishment coming. And that bull is a veteran that has done that in our Sanford Health sports medicine team. Quickly there to lend a hand. And he is in good hands. Trust me, look at that. Took a shot. One, two, three, four. And then slam back and shoot. Here's another angle. Right there. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. He did a lot of stuff without hitting the ground. I know. But look how quick he got back up. Huh. How quick he got back up after all of that. Yes. Folks. Very gritty, tough young man from Texas, Andrew Alvitres. Check it in, son. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, Alvitres. And folks, you can see the clock stopped at four point. For three seconds, this will automatically, automatically go to a review. You cannot touch the bull with any part of your free arm. Here's the deal. You cannot touch the bull yourself, the equipment, or the ground during the eight second ride. That is the rule. He'll find his way out. Roll River Casino and Hotel. And ladies and gentlemen, the free arm 4.04. It is a no score for Andrew Alvidres. What a heartbreaker right there for this guy that is, what, it was November, December. He was the number one ranked man in the world, and he has moved back to fourth. He's still in it. Obviously, dude's the real deal. He is, but I got a feeling it's just getting started for Double A. Thumbs up, yeah. and it's back to work in less than 24 hours for Alvi Dress. Mighty low. Hey, what happened? What happened here? Four point. 1.47 seconds. And Dalton Castle, here's the replay of it. Oh, man, in a rare. You just don't see that guy come down that quick. Mighty Mike is beating DK right out of there and cannot recover the Wrangler Cowboy. Eaten and battered and bruised and... It's the final one. Are we saving the best for last? Yeah, it could be a round win. Soul King's a great bull right in the gate. Kike, he's one of the best riders in the game, so we could have a round win right here. How's that for back of the shoots analysis, guys? Blake Sharp, everybody. I like the prediction. He said this could be the highest score of the night. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Iceman, Kaiki Pacheco. And the bull is called Soul King. Watch this Royal River replay. 
Clint Atkins, yep. a phenomenal performance by the Iceman. He needs to beat 87 and a half points. The numbers are in. How about 88 and a quarter? And how fitting it was. Blake Sharp called his shot. We saved the best for last. And that final score is the highest marked ride of the night. Sioux Falls, South Dakota at the end of night number one. Here, round one. Friday night in Sioux Falls belongs with 88 and a quarter points to the Iceman, Kanki Pacheco. Definitely not a party in the USA for no. Cody Hooks. And how about that young bull right there flying wired? Tommy Julian and BS Cattle Company. Let's talk bull numbers quickly. And the bull score, the Yeti bull score, take a look at the right hand side of that big screen. Yep. 45 and a quarter for flying wired. Yeah, that is. How many Chase Outlaw fans do we have? Here we go. And Outlaw, the Monster Energy Superstar, and Cutting Torch. Matt, that bull bucked him off back in January in Duluth, Georgia, and he's going to do it again. And spun out of there for the veteran. And Outlaw fans, he needs, he needs to hear from you right now. He's in some pain. He's calling for him. Just takes one to get it started. That's it. Just one. Just, just one. one to get it just started. Just one. Yo, no. Are you kidding me? I know. Seven point seven four seconds, and they are going to review this. They are going to review this now. Here is the situation. They will start to make sure the clock started correctly at the beginning of this ride. The clock starts when the bull breaks the plane of the bucket chute, and then. As we talk a hair bit of PBR 101, you cannot touch the bull yourself, the equipment during the eight second ride or the ground. Now, you could be flying through the air, but when you have you. that bull rope in your hand. Hey, can I explain something? Absolutely yeah. you may. So here's the deal. If they're wrong on the challenge, it costs them 500 bucks. He did not push the challenge button because he's like a rookie and he doesn't have 500 bucks. So Silvano Alves, who has won $7 million doing this, pushed the button for him. <laughs> yep. Right? I like that. I like that. I like, I think, I think there's a chance, Matt. I like that the $7 million man said, look at it again. And I like that they came back with a thumbs up. He made it. <laughs> so attack qualified ride for Galerme and now the numbers are gonna start rolling in for the 21 year old and, and look at Silvano he said it's five hundred dollars I got you uh, he said man I got you I got five hundred in my boot that's got that in my sock right now look at him there's there's Silvano he's won over six million dollars riding bulls in the PBR 500 no big deal how about 82 and a quarter points that is the sixth qualified round of the weekend we'll take it 82 and a quarter 
Casey Coulter has been put on that clock, not needed. Oh, oh, man. Boy, he got rocked. The Sanford Health Sports Medicine team quickly right there. Into the aid for him. Sports medicine team you're talking about, they've been busy tonight. Oh, yeah. Coulter helped out of the arena. Watch this. Watch him get flipped. Yeah. Stepped Ooh. on. Hmm. Could have, oh man, could have been worse, but glad to see Casey Coulter. Well, so Matt, here's one of your, the 30th ranked bull rider in the world. All right, we're gonna have a- Come on, son. Time for a pep talk, Oh, right. really, is it that time? What have we ridden, one bull today? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yep. All right, bull yep. riders, look at me, you kids from the old man. Tried some bulls here. See this? My back's getting tired from carrying this show. Let's oh, go. Okay. 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 <laughs> Red flag. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He's got a hundred bad days. Let's make this one special night. Come on, kid. Let's go. That is a bull that has bucked off the best bull riders in the world some 30 plus times. Tonight, a teenager from an hour and 20 minutes from right here just went at him with everything he had. South Dakota, what are you gonna give to the kid that's representing your home state? Okay, this next guy? Yeah. When I did the whole I'm carrying the show thing, he was staring at me. Ooh. Like, he was like, I got you, old man. I got you, old man. I like that. This guy, I don't know who he is, it's... but let's go. Bull called Curbside Pickup. Let's deliver, Adriano. Oh, nope. Not going to do it. Not a. Oh, look at those U.S. Border Patrol safety team bullfighters. Look out this one. Sorry, dude. He'll make his way around the arena. Hey. Yep. Just a, a proclamation from this guy. What's that? You stand out in the middle that long, uh -huh. I'm not saving you. Yeah, if you can get this far down the arena, I mean, that's out of your jurisdiction. Watch this, Adriano. Hey, take a look at those U.S. Border Patrol bullfighters. Look at how quick they move into the right position, taking care of each other. Getting that bull's attention. Those guys are doing fantastic. While they're all three gathered in the center of the arena, how about you pay them off? Nathan Harp, Cody Webster, Lucas Teodoro. Fantastic job, guys. High voltage, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Kind of went dance move to gritty. Yes. It's the, you're here. Right. And then. Oh, I see what you did there. Let's go with one of the most recent guys, world number three, Dalton Castle, is a week ago, championship round in Albuquerque, took a hit, tore his PCL and MCL on his left knee, also fractured his left leg just below the kneecap. He did come back here in Sioux Falls, he tried to ride in round number one and wasn't able to get the job done. He told me, I've got to let the swelling go down, try and build some strength back in my left leg. You're seeing the hit there, guys. And he said, as soon as I can get that strength back, I will be back. I know I've got to keep making a move up those world standings. As for Boutro Campbell, expect to see world number five back next week as well. Barbosa now, they're up. Oh! And just coming off of Kate's injury report and the unorthodox exit right there, Barbosa clearly frustrated with himself, but Mac, he's lucky to just get out of there with his health. Yeah, he's, he's extremely lucky. And when one starts bucking like this and backing out of there, you better start riding and trying because things can get, that, that's so close to being, I can't even explain how bad that could have been if that bull's back feet is not a few inches off of his head and chest right there.
Forget highway to the danger zone. That is immediate placement in the danger zone. Barbosa heated. We can all see that. And if you can lip read, please log on to PBR.com and let us know what you think was said. As we it's not that you don't do the same things, you just do them better and longer. He's off to the side. It's not going to be worth a lot, but just to qualify right now is probably going to be good enough to bring you back to the championship round. So there is a reason Aaron Williams is fired up. He's always that fired up. Wow. Always that fired up. But this is a heck of an effort. You know, it starts, everything's really good right here. Then he gets behind and to the outside on a really good little bull. And he does not give up. Just bears down, fights his way through it. Yeah, man. <laughs> no one is going to out effort Aaron Williams, and no one's going to out celebrate him. Let's send it down to Kate. Every ride is worth celebrating, and you prove that every time. Talk about the effort in one like that. Uh, my mantra that I like to live by is plan A, no quit. My plan A is to ride bulls, no quit. Keep it shut and keep moving and keep riding. That's all we can do. Made it the distance. Well done. Thank you, ma'am. Craig. No need to go to plan B <laughs> as we look at Jesse Petrie. Often associated with bull riding, but that was just a pretty out from Jesse Petri. He just made that look fancy. Yeah, a really good bull there that Petri really likes. A lot of the guys like that bull. And when you get that kind of bull, you make it happen on him, right? You take advantage of that good draw by your name, and Petri does. He makes a flawless ride right here from start to finish. Good job, Jesse Petri. 86 and a quarter, good enough for fourth overall. And we'll see Petri on his way to his sixth championship round of the season. No doubt about it. Jesse already back into his calm demeanor. There's your smile finally as we move on to Wyatt Rogers now on the clock as well. The clock stopped at 6.94. You can bet Wyatt Rogers is going to challenge this, or somebody will on his behalf, as Shake and Bake continues to Shake and Bake out on the dirt. Yeah, let's watch this back. I mean, Shake and Bake has a great day for a guy to ride him. And it looked to me like that's exactly what Wyatt did. Yeah, that, that, I, right. I think that will be uh, looked at. And it was at six and change, right? Yeah, six high, high sixes. So Roy Doyle going to look at this one through the replay center. You have to figure. And they're going to make sure everything's in order. So many different cameras, our great crew, keeping us honest and keeping the judges informed. Oh, boy, it might have been... Now, you know the rules better than me, my friend. That free arm, does it start at the shoulder? I mean, you yeah, would, I would think call it, it does, at the right? Shoulder, yeah. So if that upper part of the arm came down and made contact, this is going to stay a zero. And it looks like that might be the case as Wyatt seems to be accepting his fate. I don't think he is so much. Okay. <laughs> Still going on then. Well, we're going to move on for the moment to Rafael De Brito. It's a qualified ride for Wyatt Rogers. So, taking their time but making sure they got it right. Let's see what it's worth. 87 points. Hey, good job for Rogers. Bull had a good day. Wyatt made a good ride. So, what a reversal of fortune. Patience pays off for Rogers as he has almost assured himself a spot in the championship round. Great matchup right here. Should be around to the right. This could this could take the lead.
DeBrito bounces a bit off the dirt, but not after eight seconds of fantastic effort. And what a change from round one, where we had only seen six qualified ride, rides total. We've now seen four out of five guys ride, and how about this one? 90 and three quarters. That's a heck of a ride, and look, when DeBrito decides he's gonna make the whistle, I don't really care what the bull is. When he decides he's gonna make the whistle, that's the outcome right there. This guy can really ride. Let's see what he's gonna be like here. The direction change was enough as credit Cody Webster and all the bullfighters for keeping, keeping safe. Yeah, great job there as we watch it back on the Can-Am cam. And look, Daniel, Daniel's got him teed off on right here going left. Smart bull though, reverses it, puts him down, and then here comes the bullfighter stepping in. Just fantastic work to hang in there, hold, take that shot, give Daniel time to get out of there. If they just blow through this right here, doesn't work, stays. That, that's a great job. As always, our U.S. Border Patrol protection team in the right spot. Yeah, this is a really good old bull, like you said, been around a long time. There's your eight in shades of that earlier out where I believe it was Jesse Petrie on Lone Survivor. When the guys get a chance at Sugar Boom Boom, they know the potential is there. Yeah, and, and I just think, and I know he'd been on a buck off streak that Kate was talking about, but I just think there's too much talent and ability there to be held back for very long. Like, that's a guy that those buck off streaks, when they do happen, should start getting shorter and shorter. And that 84 and a half, gives him a chance. 12 will make it in to the championship round. We now have 11 scores overall. Is he gonna be successful at every level? Well, he's definitely gonna get the eight seconds. Question becomes, was there enough at the beginning and there? We just saw it, the re-ride flag gets thrown. So Valerius is gonna, Get another one. Yeah, and we were talking about the timing, and I was talking yeah. about the good timing of this bull. Well, it was not very good for about the first five seconds. But yes, that does transfer, if you understand that, because to me, the timing is the front end coming up, going down. Yep. The kick coming up, going down. That's where you find the timing. And if you understand that, you can do some work. Hey, let's look to see what Paulo Krimber does here. Thumbs up or thumbs down, because this would be a second score for Galerme. And if he keeps it, there you go. He's gonna keep it. That is a business decision from the Brazilian. He now moves, even though it's only 76 and a half, he moves a full bull ahead. Outlaw sustained a right foot fracture a week ago in Albuquerque. The custom cast to fin side of his boot, it was going to take a couple weeks. So he called on Cooper Davis, who had a similar injury during PBR teams. He still had his cast and boot. So he's wearing Davis's here. And guys, think of another sport where riding through injuries is so common that you call on your coworker to use his cast. Yeah, no, not to mention his theory that they have the same shoe size, that the same cast can fit, by the way, inside the boot itself. Yeah, and I talked to him earlier. I asked him about his boy. He said it said DNA by his name. That's all I needed to know. There's the reset button for Outlaw. Few riders get as fired up. We saw Aaron Williams get a tad emotional earlier. Chase Outlaw, known to do the same, and he earned it that time. 88 points. Good for Chase. You talked about it. I mean, it, struggles have been real for Outlaw this season. Great little bull right here, round to the left, and Outlaw turns her loose and goes at him. Good ride. Let's send it back down to Kate. Chase getting some congratulations here from Dalton Castle, a bit of a conversation. We mentioned the foot fracture. You've had to battle through so much. 88 points here in Sioux Falls means what right now? 
it does and uh backs against the wall shooting just to make it to the finals and um i like it like that it means uh you, you got to make sure you have the fight and uh, yeah the foot fracture and all we can try to block it all out because i ain't riding them with my foot uh it just hurts when i land and thank god and uh to keep blessing me that i haven't gave up on myself because um we still got a lot, lot to go, and I'm having fun. Thank everybody. I mean, yeah, just having fun. Thank you, Kate. Appreciate it, Chase. Great ride. Thank you. Craig. Kaiki on the clock. Oh, boy. Oh! He takes a hard shot on the ground. We started the show talking about how the top guys in the world have not been immune from these strings of injuries. And Mac, this is gonna be hard, I know, to watch again, but Pacheco absolutely takes a shot. Yeah, and you watch both feet whip up behind him. That's not something you see very often with Kaiki Pacheco. Tip your hat to that bull. Darn good out right there, but we talked to the injuries. You know, these guys, the top guys have been getting beat up week in, week out. And then you watch the back feet doesn't get any closer now. I mean, there's contact, no, yeah. but it's it's skimming down its side instead of being solid right no, there. No, exactly. That was um, the proverbial dodging a bullet right there for Kaiki is certainly you never even want to get grazed by that much power, but Pacheco looks as good as he could be at the moment, and his 88 a quarter still will give him a shot at winning this thing. JW's got his arm in there. <laughs> Legit gets back on track with a buck off as he sends Brady Randolph home early. And Randolph gets around the corners pretty good on this bull to start. And look, I'm legit too, just two. Even today, he's back to his normal around to the left. But a pretty nice day for what we've seen out of this bull's career. Usually got just a little more juice to him than that. Randolph not happy about it. Uh, clearly only 10 men in the championship round and they will decide it all mac i think there's one right at least one that just pops out for you oh, i can't wait to see pacheco and flapjack mix it up right here i think this is going to be a great matchup well you've got pacheco down there possibly from the third slot with a chance to steal this win loosely holding on to the vest Cool Whip's day at the office lasts exactly 2.07 seconds. Yeah, and it's just a big, long jump out of there. One here, and this next one is long. Kind of hits flat-footed. You see the bull scores coming in, 42 and a half. That's, that's nothing for Cool Whip. That's, that's not going to be a score that he keeps and carries into no. the World Finals. That's a low one they'll drop out of there. He's got enough outs they can do that. And for Aaron Williams, only his second championship round of the season. More of the same as he just shakes his head and hopes for another chance later on. Remember, only five regular season stops left before our world finals. He's tough to get by. And very quickly, Zane Cook not only becomes the latest victim and the latest zero, but that is now two dozen consecutive buck-offs for Dennis. And this is what Dennis does every time. Long jumps around to the right. I mean, that's, you know what's coming. A good bull score turning in there too, 45 and a quarter. Look at the front end though. And look at how far each jump goes. I mean, he's he's Ooh. going forward eight foot every jump he takes. Yeah, and a hard landing for Cook. Wow. Hopefully he'll be okay. He doesn't seem any worse for wear at the moment. Now I have seen Tate take them like that when they start to go down on the front end a little bit. Yep. Here's his best shot yeah. so far. No, and the judges agree with you, my friend, is they've now put him on the clock. Holmeyer unable to take advantage of that small window that Domino gave him, and now the judges only have 1.5 seconds to critique. Yeah, and this is something that 
that we typically haven't seen out of Tate. You watch when this bull turns out of here, and this bull's going to be a handful, but Tate's head's up, leg swings over his back, just really not in it right there. Well, if you're a longtime fan, you have seen this before in the championship round. <laughs> Riding solo is sitting where he needs to be. Oh, ho, ho, ho. he got out clean, and the clock only shows Dos Seconds as Dos Santos, for the third time, tastes defeat. Well, it was progress, though. I like how you found the silver lining. You know, there's that big rare out of there like we've seen with Frost. Big bull scores, 46. Those are the kind of numbers riding so low. Not only can he put up, but he needs to put up to win another world title. All about getting left out of the shoot with that one. Well, look, right, every out matters, not just for the riders in their quest for gold, but certainly for these bulls. We saw Cool Whip with a subpar out. Solo's out, however, is the opposite. It moves him back into second overall in this world champion bull race. Are you surprised? The uh, here we go. Lost his grip. Hand popped out, and it's over at 3-8. And we're talking inches. An inch too much back on a bull like that. Can't get by with it. You look at this. Up and down and yeah. kick. Snaps him one time. Misses it right there. One time, and then the next one on the way down, rope pops out of his hand. Hey, look, 45 and a quarter. You surprised that isn't a little bit higher? Uh, you know, probably not. That's still a great score, sure. right? I think sure. if that ride continues, you see the bull score go up. Well, Will Pacheco finishing in third. Earn enough points to be our world number one. Yeah, it's young rookie bull. And, but I think that just speaks to how great this bull yeah. can be. That's it. It is Guilherme Valeras who will win Sioux Falls a career first at this level. He debuted last week, and seven days later, he's an event winner. Wow, man. And you think about the journey this weekend that he has taken to get to this point. And, you know, first round ride. It's really close, goes to a review, gets a score, hanging off to the side. Let's check out Ricky Vaughn real quick, though. Didn't get to see a lot of him, 44 and three quarters, but really a cool trip from him. But going back to Glare May, I mean, gets that ride review. He's hanging on by the hair of his chinny chin chin mm -hmm. to get his first score. Mm -hmm. Then today earlier, it's a re-ride opportunity. Bull has a bad trip, hangs on to yep. him, turns it yep. down comes back it just kind of outlasts everybody you know look you and i he's already our winner can he leave three for three <laughs> mr right now gets the final say as for the third week in a row the bulls blank the best cowboys in the business yeah and, and you know he's just kind of shook up from word go there. But the Bulls doing their part, man. I believe this is the first round right here. This is the one I was talking about where he just gritted it out, got a score, and that's what really propels him to win his first event. Welcome to the winner's circle, and look at this. Lemmy is no longer the world number one by two and a half points. Pacheco is now the man. Well, that is a wrap for the PBR Unleashed the Beast here in Sioux Falls. Be sure to join us next week for our time in Nampa, Idaho. For Justin McBride, Cody Webster, Kate Harrison, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Hummer. We thank you, as always, for watching.